Hi there, and welcome to Design Tab. My name is Montague Munro, and today we're going to be taking a look at the AngularJS JavaScript framework and how we can utilize it to create rich client side applications. AngularJS is a JavaScript framework by Google. It allows you to create powerful, dynamic web applications easily. So we're going to jump right in <coughs> and open up our default text editor. Once we're inside here, we'll have an index.html. We'll open that up and we'll get started. Let's get started by putting in some basic HTML boilerplate. And we'll give it a title of Angular JS Tutorial. We'll save that. Okay. Now, what we're going to do with our index file now is add AngularJS to it. Thankfully there is a CDN library that we can use and just include in the header to easily add the JavaScript library to our uh, project. So let's jump into Google and let's open up and Google search for AngularJS. Pick the first one along the top from AngularJS.org and hit the download button. Here you'll see a CDN key. Basically we can just um, copy this and then go into our sublime text. Inside the head, underneath the title or above, all we need to do is type in script, source, and paste our link inside there. And that's it. One that we save the document. Now we have AngularJS inside of our index.html and it can we can start to utilize it to create our app. Alright, now inside the body we're gonna want to create a new div to hold our app. So let's make a div with an ID of content. And this is where we will hold all of our Angular stuff. Alrighty. Now we're going to want to set up the page for AngularJS. There's a there are a few things we're going to need to do to tell AngularJS to jump in and start rendering stuff on our screen. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go into our div and we're going to want to put after the ID we want to put ng-app is equal to and we will name ours um, tutorial app. There we go. The convention is also to start it with a capital letter when naming apps or controllers, but we'll get into more of that on another tutorial. So, once you have that done, we'll save the file. And we're also going to want to add a controller to this as well. Uh, controllers are used to work through the logic that we're going to be displaying on our page using Angular. For a controller, there's a very simple command. We just type in ng-controller, very simple, very similar to the ng app, and we're going to put in tutorial. Oh, did I spell that right? Yep, controller again with a capital in the front. This isn't required to put a capital in the front, but it's just convention, and it's a good idea to do. Now we'll save our file again. All right, so. These two names are just ones that we made up ourselves. It could be anything else, but it's a good idea to make something descriptive, something that you could read and understand what it does. Alright, so we're ready to move on now and start to make some of these things we've put in there. So first things first, let's make a new file. Whoops. New file, and we want to save it as... Let's save it as app.js that's fairly standard for our module and we want to save it now inside app.js we're going to rig up our ng app and to do that it's very simple we just go var app is equal to angular angular dot module and then inside that it accepts two arguments the first is the name of the module 
and we already specified that here, tutorial app. So let's paste that in. And because we've used the same in both ones, they will now connect together and it will know that this is for that. And then after that, it takes a, an array of dependencies. We don't need to worry about that inside this tutorial because we're only covering the basics. But just know that in the future, if you ever need to include any outside references or other modules, you can pop them straight in here and they'll work. All right, so now we have our app initiated and just started. This is where we will base all of our other little things off. It keeps it modular, and we just know that in the end, all of our controllers and methods and stuff like that can all be inside of this module. All right then, now let's go on to making our controller. New file, let's make a new file, and we will save it as tutorial controller.js. There we go, that's fairly descriptive. It doesn't matter too much what the name of the file is because we will be um, specifying the actual name of our controller like we did with the original, with the app.js. So to make a controller, it's very similar to the before one. You just go app.controller and then inside this it takes the first argument being what we specified over here is tutorial controller. So now we know that this one will hook up to this because we've named them the same. And the second one is a function. And this is where we're going to hold everything for this controller. So let's go function and it takes scope. Don't worry about scope just yet, I'll explain it in a second. And then make sure to add our little semicolon at the end. And this is our controller set up and ready to go. So there we go, we'll save that. So, just from a, now we need to, what we need to do is include both of these JavaScript files inside our HTML. Now that's not very hard to do, all we need to do is go script and then source app.js, which is for this one here. And we also want script source and we want to tu tutorial controller whoops um, controller dot js now one thing to note here is that we need to put our app dot js above tutorial controller dot js the reason for this is that we we basically um, specify app here we yep and you'll see this one uses app. So we say app.controller and we created app in here. So in order for this one to know what app is, it needs to come first in the list and then it will have access to it. Um, that's probably the easiest way I could explain it at the moment off the top of my head. Alright, so now we can get started and learn a little bit, a little bit about something called scope. So let's go into <coughs> our controller and you'll see function scope. Now what is scope? Well, basically this is where we will assign all our controller variables and this in turn will make them available within the div that we set in our index. Think of it like the index doesn't know anything about the controller and the controller doesn't know anything about the index but they have this one variable between them and, um, and this is like a bridge so tutorial controller knows about scope and index knows about scope. So if we set scope to something inside of our controller, the index will be able to know what it is without digging right into the code. And this is basically um, a way of uh, two-way data binding that is incredibly helpful. Um, I won't explain it in depth at the moment, but it's something that AngularJS has brought to the table that a lot of people are really loving. All right, so let's do something with scope. We'll start off with something very brief to sort of get an understanding of what scope is. So we have access to scope because we popped it in here. Because it's inside the, the brackets, um, we can access it and set stop to it. So let's say scope.info or we'll say is equal to, and let's make a nice string, something like um, I, uh, I know what scope does now and then we'll save that. 
So we have scope.info, which is set to this. Now inside our index.html, we can go into this div and we can go info. Now this is a strange little tag. Um, this is used to display information inside your HTML using um, Angular. And you'll say basically what we're saying is is we want to use ng controller. Uh, so not ng controller. Yeah, we want to use ng controller and tutorial controller. So that'll allow us to basically go into this. And then we say scope dot info is this. So we don't need to put in scope because we've set our controller here. So we just say info instead of, for example, scope scope dot info. We just keep it nice and simple. And this has access to the info. So, let's take this opportunity to go into our browser and have a look at what's happening. So I'm going to open my browser here and open this. And you'll see here, this is our my little server and it's just running index.html. And you'll, it'll say, I know what scope does now. And you should basically realize immediately that that is what we set in our scope variable here. And we are displaying it using this little line here. And this is just the very bare basics. Obviously, you know, you could just say p um, ha 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 and it'll come up. But when you get into more complicated stuff, this will be a godsend. Alright, so let's move on to something a little bit more fun. So you should understand generally what scope variables are and basically that they're also um, available within HTML if you wrap them inside these double curly brackets. All right. But um, let's go into something yeah, a little bit a little bit bigger. Let's go to uh, binding. Binding is basically a concept that uh, allows you to on the fly bind a variable to um, something inside your HTML and have it update. So we'll remove our little double curly braces there and we'll go into our tutorial controller and remove our scope.info and we're back to a nice clean slate. Now, inside HTML, let's do something like input, and we want it to be type text, so we have a little text box, and now we're going to use something new. This is ng-model, and ng-model is basically for setting up binding. It allows you to bind um, your input to a variable inside the scope, and it will always watch it. Okay, so let's just say input. Um, yeah, in or input value. We'll go for that. Now, we just put in that backslash there and save it. So now we have a little text box. And let's make sure that's working. Yep, see here. And if we go back into here, next up, we also want a little curly brackets, and let's say input value and this will display the input value alrighty now <clears throat> you basically th the way to understand this is we don't need to go into our controller or anything because this is just a very simple binding this binds it to input value this displays input value um, so if we go into our um, Chrome and refresh <laughs> Now what you should see happen here is because input value is both in our display and in our uh, input box, as we type, say so as we type, the web page or website will update. And you can see as I'm typing stuff, it's automatically updating the website, which is very handy and a really cool little trick. Alright, so that's probably the easiest way to understand binding. I might take a, a second here to sort of mainly tell the difference between um, binding and setting our variables and our scope variables. Inside, oh, let me just open my thing here. Alright, so with ng-model, we're setting it to a variable called input value, and we're creating this variable inside here. Um, and ng-model looks at input value and basically says whatever we type into our input 
is going to be held inside this variable, and we're going to constantly update it as it's changed. And then all we're doing here is displaying what it is. And because we're using Angular and using binding, we can have it update on the fly. So, so far, in the, basically in this tutorial, we've managed to cover what is AngularJS, uh, why it's great, um, then, you know, how, how to install and use the basics and get AngularJS working in our website. We've also covered basic um, ng app and creating it, uh, creating controllers and adding them to the index. We've also briefly gone over what is scope, as well as how to use it, as well as binding. Um, we'll more than likely be covering more AngularJS in future tutorials. If you are interested in AngularJS, there are some great tutorials both on the AngularJS website and also on a web website called eggheads.io where they cover various Angular tutorials in sh small bite-sized videos of about two to three minutes that cover very specific tasks. If you're interested in more about web design and web development, feel free to come check out designtab.me. We are a new website and we have a few tutorials at the moment that will cover cool stuff like this and various other interesting little things you can do in web design. Anyway, without, without further ado, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you.